So my name is Dahlia Armanpour and I'm part of the training and family education team uh, for QSLA here at the Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles. So prior to working with Kala, I was working in the assessment portion of QSLA. So some of your names or faces may be familiar, so I'm happy to see you all again. Today, we also have Alex Guerrero helping us. She's a program assistant. If you have any technical issues or questions, free, please feel free to reach out to either me or Alex during the webinar and we'll do our best to help you. So we created this training with you in mind. So today we'll just be going over how to better use Zoom for family engagement, staff engagement, and other program activities. So as I'm sure you're familiar with, Zoom is a part of our daily lives, um, especially in the workplace. In your program, some of you may be using Zoom regularly, and the features we learned today will help you improve those interactions with family and staff. I know in, in my case, I still use Zoom regularly, so these are helpful tools that we could all learn together. So how many of you are using Zoom regularly still? If you could just give me a thumbs up, either a reaction or a video. How many of us are using Zoom regularly still? Hey, yeah, so it looks like we, yeah, a good majority of us are still using it, if not all of us. Okay, so let's go through some of these features. Let's start with some friendly reminders first. So we want you to interact with us. Um, please feel free to use the chat to ask questions or comments. And like I said, just make sure your first and last name are set. I think we're good with that. Um, these are just some quick directions on how you just click your, you would right click your name and rename yourself or you click your video to rename yourself. I think we're all good there though. Um, we're here to support your learning. If you have any questions, concerns, technical issues, please let me or Alex know and we'll help you the best we can. And lastly, set yourself up for a positive webinar experience. Just be comfortable, snack away, stretch as needed. I know we're all still working, so feel free to stretch and get up as needed. Just a quick note, please stay for the entire duration of the webinar to receive your PD credits. So let's start with a fun icebreaker. So how many of us are familiar with the reaction menu? Let's, let's select a reaction menu. Let's see what we all click. I'm gonna choose one too. All right, see some coming in. Great, I'm gonna choose one too. Perfect, let's see if everyone can choose one. Okay, it looks like, yeah, it looks like all of us know how to use it. Perfect. So this reaction menu, it's something fun to use during these events or trainings. Um, it's an easy way to just express how you feel. Um, also, if you have a question during a webinar, you could do the raise hand. That's a good way to let the um, speaker know that you have a question. Um, it's also just an easy way to just show your reaction without actually speaking. Perfect, okay, so let's move on. So the training in this, the information in this training and even more Zoom helpful resources can be found in the Zoom Help Center or the Zoom blog. Let's go over our agenda for today. So today we'll be going over how to add a co-host, how to share your screen, how to record a meeting, how to set up breakout rooms, and how to set up polls. So in this training today, we'll have hands-on opportunities. I'll do demonstrations and I'll ask for volunteers to participate. Um, there will also be an infographic that will be shared at the end of the training, because I know there will just be a lot of content we go over and it could be easier to just have a visual. Also, the PowerPoint will be shared as well. And lastly, if there are any questions that are not covered with the content of this training, and if you have an extra few minutes, feel free to stick around at the end and then we could just review those together. Okay. So the training today is, um, uh, there was a prerequisite for the training, not that you have to take it, it was just recommended. It was Zoom Basics Part 1. So Zoom Basics Part 1 just went over some of these topics here. So went over how to join a meeting, how to connect your audio or video, how to use mute, how to use chat, how to raise your hand, how to apply virtual backgrounds, and lastly, how to change your Zoom view 
So the Zoom view has the speaker view or gallery view. I just want to briefly go over this because it could be useful for today. Um, let's see. So how you would do this is you would go to the right side menu of your screen and you could see this little bento box here. And right next to it, it says view. Oops. If you click that, then you have these two options, speaker view or gallery view. And we could just try that today right now. So if you choose speaker view, you'll just see me. And if you choose gallery, then we'll see everybody in the actual training. Let's see, I'll give you all about a minute to try this and let me know if you have any questions about this. That doesn't work if you're using your cell phone for this training, right? Right, yeah, for the, yeah. On the cell phone, you won't see the option. I think on the cell phone, you could swipe. If I'm not mistaken, you could just, I think on the tablet too, you could just swipe um, left or right. I think it's right and you could see that option. Yes, thank you. Sure. Okay, so are we all good there with that? Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's start with how to assign a co-host. So let's start with a funny meme. So when your teacher makes you the co-host on Zoom, you can see this raccoon is very excited for all the power and privileges that he or she or they will have. So having a co-host um, gives you almost all the privileges or powers a host can have. So it's very beneficial to have someone assigned as co-host. So for today, for example, um, we have Alex helping us and she's the co-host. So she could help run the training. She could help mark attendance. She could help um, monitor the chat. She could help run the slides. There's a lot of powers and privileges a co-host can have. So it's very important to have one. There's just a few limitations to uh, having a co-host. So for example, a co-host can't actually start a meeting. They can't create new polls, but they can launch them. And they can't end a meeting. But almost all of the other um, features a co-host can do. So let's see how we could enable a co-host. So first we would enable a co-host and then we're gonna go over how to assign a co-host in the participant list. So let's start with enabling a co-host. So first you would sign into your Zoom account and then you would see the left side navigation menu which looks like this. You would click settings. Then you would go to in meeting basic right here. Then you would scroll down until you see co-host. Once you see co-host, you would toggle this button. So it's blue and that means that it's enabled or on. Okay, so now that we've enabled that in the settings, now we can see how we could assign a co-host and during an actual live meeting. So you would open the participant list and I welcome you all to try this now. Um, you won't actually be able to assign a co-host, but you could just get a feel for it. So open the participant list, hover your mouse over the person you would like to assign as a co-host. You would click more, and then you would see the option to make um, this person co-host that you've selected. So once you've selected co-host, you have successfully assigned a co-host. So it's really easy to do this. Um, there's no limitations on the number of co-hosts you can have in a meeting. So if you're feeling, um, you know, very adventurous, you could have up to, you know, you could have like 50 co-hosts if you really want. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but it could be, um, you know, you can have all that power. So now that we've gone through that, let's see. So that was it for how to assign a co-host. Um, any questions on that before I move on to sharing your screen? Yes, hi. Um, I actually tried, um, you said to hover over someone's name? Yeah, you won't be able to do it right now because you're um, you're not the host, but it would just oh. give you a feel for it, yeah. Right, but um, to hit more, you say? Yes. Right now, so it only says pin, so that's okay? Oh, okay. I'm not sure if it'll show up if you're not. I'll show you what it looks like on my screen since I'm Perfect. the host here. Thank you. Of course. So do you see this screen okay? Oh, 
So yes. Okay, so I'm going to go right here to you. So I click more. And then you see how I have all these options here. So I could do pin, which would make you the spotlight, or I could make you co host or host. Oh, oh not. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so thank you, Tom. So if you are just a participant, it'll just say chat or pin for participants. But if you are um, the actual host, you'll see more of those options there. Okay, any other questions on assigning a co host before we move on? Okay, if any questions do come up, feel free to ask in the chat. We'll also have the end of the training for the Q&A portion as well. Okay, so let's move on to sharing your screen. So how to share your screen. So sharing your screen is a free feature. So when you're in the live meeting, you would click share screen in the Zoom, um, in the Zoom meeting controls. So right now I am actually sharing, but if I was not, you would see the share um, button here. I'll show you what it looks like right here. So it looked like this, and then you click share screen. And once you do this, you'll see various options pop up. So you can either share your full desktop or you can share individual screens. This is what the window looks like. So that first, the one that's um, highlighted in blue is your full desktop and the other ones are individual applications. But just a note, if you do share your full desktop, then just be aware that your participants will see everything on your desktop. So I think it is, I recommend that you share individual applications. That way you could just select what parts of participants see. Okay. So let's say you are, you've begun sharing and now you want to share another window or another application. So what you would do is you would click new share and this is what it looks like. And you saw it on my screen here too. Let me pull it up. So you would click new share. And once you do this, you could choose the different um, applications or windows you wanna see. Let me show you quickly what that's gonna look like. So here it is. This is the screen I'm sharing. So if I wanna share something else, I would click what I want to show, click that and click share. And I'll show you this again in um, a few slides down when I show you how to find a recording. Okay, and another cool feature you could do with screen sharing is you could actually share your audio too. So you could, there's two options for sharing your audio. You could share your audio, share your sound while you're sharing your screen. So you would click the more button and then click share sound, click more, and then you would go to share sound. So if I am sharing a video right now on YouTube, I could click my share sound and you would um, get, my, get my computer audio that way. Um, there's another option as well. You could go to the share screen menu and then you could select the computer audio. So this is great if you are not actually um, sharing an image or a video and you just wanna share your sound. So this could be good to do prior to having like an actual event start. So you could share um, some music before, um, when everyone's getting settled in, this is a good way to do it with actual, without an actual video or image attached to it. Okay, and then, so your screen controls for sharing your screen, these are really just easy um, controls here you have. So you could either, you could click stop share, which was just stop the sharing, or you would click pause share, which would just pause the sharing for a moment. But there have been many times where I have paused the share and I forgot to reshare. So just make sure that you're mindful of this and you do click resume once you're ready to begin your sharing again. So sharing your screen is pretty easy and straightforward. Are there any questions before we move on? On sharing your screen. Let's see here. I have a question really quick. Um, so uh, uh, when you pause to share, 
you click the uh, share button again to continue sharing. So let's see, I'll show you here. It pops up, there we go. So I pause share and then it says your screen sharing spots and then you just click resume share. Okay. You see that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure. Any other? Yes, hi. Um, I see you have a security call share annotate. Is that because um, you're a paying Zoom uh, participant? Because I don't see that in mine. Oh, you don't see that in yours? This, this one you're referring to where it says enhanced encryption? The security button? Or this? Oh, okay. Um, you know, that's a good question. I want to say it's because I am a host. I'm not sure if it has to do with um, being a paid user, but that is a good question. So I want to make note of that question just so I could give you a better answer. And it's only because like I, I don't, at the bottom of my screen, I don't have the three dots for the more option. Okay, are you, um, are you on a computer or? Yes, I'm on the laptop. Oh, okay, okay. See, so the if you don't see them more, it could be because there's nothing else to expand. Are you under um, a free account right now? Uh, yes, through work. Okay, okay. So I think what the more um, gives you are more options too. If you're not um, like I just expand, I made my window full screen, and my or option my more options are very limited now. Um, it could be as a paid user, you do get more options here, like for. Um, I believe it's polls that are added. You just get extra options. So it could be that's why there's a difference there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions before we move on? Any other questions about sharing your screen? Okay, perfect. Yes, good, good afternoon. Yes, uh, you know, I just, you know, entered to the training because, you know, I was, I was not able, you know, to enter on time. So I was wondering if, uh, if there is any way that you can uh, send us by email this recording tra training for the people who enter late like me. I could, we, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely share the PowerPoint with um, everyone at the end of the training too. Um, yeah, as much as you can, it'll be okay. even great. You okay, know? perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, no because worries. I, I entered late and I don't know, you know, in what step, you know, you are doing right now, are you are right now? So yeah, I, definitely. Will I will appreciate it. This is of for, course. um, this is for, uh, training to, um, to know how to, um, manage, uh, the, what is that? How yeah. do you call it? The Zoom? Yes, I mean, exactly. Zoom basics part two. We'll just go over some more, uh, advanced features of how to use Zoom. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on here. So, so let's see, how would you use the screen sharing function for your family or staff? Let's see, let's enter some ideas in the chat so we could have some new ideas to learn from. How would you use the screen sharing function for your family or staff? Um, I could start with one idea. It would be like today where I'm sharing the presentation it's a good way to use that. I think it's the most common way, probably. Any other ideas you could think of? To share pictures, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, that's a great way to share pictures, share videos, music. Thank you, Claudia, perfect. to share new news. Yeah, that's great. These are great ideas. Thank you all. Perfect. Okay, so we have some ideas of how to use that. PowerPoint slide for meeting. Yes, thank you, Andrea. Carla staff meetings, lesson plan. Yes, definitely. There's so many useful ways to use this. Perfect. Okay, thank you all for entering those ideas. So now let's move on to our next topic here. 
So how to record a meeting. So let's see, recording a meeting, um, it's a pretty straightforward um, feature here. So you would get this, you would see this toolbar again, and you'd click the record button. So you have two options to record here. Um, if you are a free user, then we'd, you would record to your computer. Or if you are a paid user, then you have these two options. So you could either record to the computer or you could record to the cloud. And recording to the cloud just means that the recording will be saved onto Zoom's website. So Zoom will store it here and you are able to download it or you could share it right through the website. So, so you could have it um, right at the website. You could either share the link there or you could download it and share it there. But so you have two options here. I will be showing you how, to, how this looks like on the website too shortly. So let's see how to record a meeting. So once you have begun recording, you will see this little image up here. So I took this screenshot when I was using my own personal account, which is a free account. That's why you see just a circle around that red dot. But if you were a paid user, like today, you would see this cloud appear around that red dot. So additionally, you will hear that once you've begun recording, you'll hear that recording in progress voiceover that we heard today too. And then again, with most of these Zoom controls, they're pretty much all the same. It says your two options are pause or stop the recording. And lastly, so if you remember at the beginning of this training, I included that notice of recording. So that's really important to have for your family or staff event. And it's recommended that you read this and then you click record right after. Okay, so finding your recording. So now that we went over how to, how to actually record a meeting, now we could figure out how you could actually find your recording. So through the, you could do this through the Zoom. I'll show you how this looks like in a moment too. But you could do this through the Zoom website. You would sign in. You would go to that left side navigation menu. You would click recordings. And then you would see the, this tab, these two tabs. So you'd see cloud recordings or local recordings. So cloud recordings are the recordings you would find if you're a paid user. And the local recordings are the ones you would find if you have either selected this or you're a free user. Okay. And then um, let's see. So if you are, if you had recorded to your computer or you did a local recording, you could also find this directly on your computer. So Zoom creates this folder. It's under your documents, under the Zoom folder. Zoom creates this automatically. And this is where you would find the actual local recording. So let me show you how this looks like on the actual website. And I'm gonna show you how to create a new share too. So I go here and I click new share. Let me move this window here. So now I'm going to locate the window I want. I'm gonna use this. One, share. Okay, we should all see this okay. All right, okay. So we go to recordings. I went to the left side navigation menu. I went to recordings. Then I clicked, I either could click cloud recordings or local recordings. So cloud recordings are the ones that are recorded directly onto Zoom's website. So you could see here, this is the training from today and it's still processing. But if I wanted to go to an existing one, I click share. And then you could see here, if you scroll down, it says sharing information. You could click copy sharing information. I'll show you what it looks like here. So if you scroll down, you'll see your link here. And once you copy that, so if you copy, the link here, that's the sharing um, link. Okay, there we go. So you could copy that and you have your sharing information ready to go. Click done. Okay, so that's how you would find your cloud recording. Now for local recordings. So this is basically, these are um, the recordings from your actual computer. And if you read this, it says 
local recordings listed below are accessible only from the computer on which they were recorded. So these actually, I have not recorded any of these, but if I did, then I would be able to click it and it would redirect me to the file on my computer. Okay, so that's how you would find your actual recordings here. So let me go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so any questions on recording your meeting or finding a recording? Any questions that you could think of right now? Okay, if any questions come up, again, we have that Q&A portion at the end as well. Okay, so how could recording a meeting be valuable? Let's share some ideas in the chat again so we could have some new ideas to learn from. So how could recording a meeting be valuable? One idea could be, oh, just thank you, Andrea, save as a resource. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Uh, sharing it with parents or uh, whoever you're Zooming with. Uh, like say they can't attend at that particular time, so they can go back and view it as reference. Perfect, thank you, Jose. Yeah, that's a great way as well. Yeah, definitely. And there's always going to pe be people who can't attend or um, can't make it. So it's a great way to share it as well. Can it be forward to somebody as like an email or is it too you, long of a file? Yeah, you could either you could either download it and share it via email or you could copy that link in Zoom and share it that way, just depending on which way you recorded it. Thank you, Alma, a refresher. Thank you, those were all great ideas. Thank you, Elsa, we'll make note of your information there for the PowerPoint. Okay, so now let's move on to breakout rooms. Okay, so breakout rooms are sessions that are split off from the main Zoom meeting. Breakout rooms are a free feature, so you can use this with a basic or free account. So let's see, are there ways you have used, um, sorry, are there ways you have used breakout rooms already? And what are some ways breakout rooms can be used for family engagement or staff engagement purposes? So let's see, let's enter some ideas we could think of. Are there ways you have used breakout rooms already? Or what are some ways we could use this for family engagement or staff engagement? Smaller group, smaller groups for discussion. Yes, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, I agree. I feel like sometimes it could be hard to hear everybody if you have a larger group too. So these breakout rooms will help um, get everyone's opinions out and sometimes there's quieter people and it'll prompt them to share more. Any other ideas we could think of right now? I'll throw another idea out there. Um, it could be, you could do um, interactive games and breakout rooms for a fun family or staff event. You could collaborate and share ideas. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to move on here. Okay, so breakout room agenda. Um, first, we'll go over some quick facts. We'll go over how to enable breakout rooms. Um, and then we'll go over the selection options you have for breakout rooms. So you could either do pre-selection or you could actually select during a live meeting. So some quick facts about breakout rooms. It's a free feature. It can only be created with a desktop client, which means that you cannot create it from mobile devices. However, you could launch the breakout rooms um, with any device. Um, 
So only this is only available in the meeting platform, not the webinar platform currently. So the webinar platform is something that's great for large events. So think of a very large virtual lecture, and this is a, it's a paid add-on. So I think most of us are using meetings. So how to enable breakout rooms. So breakout rooms, we need to make sure that they're enabled first. So you sign into your Zoom account, you go to your settings, go to the left side navigation menu, click in meeting advanced, then you would toggle breakout room so it is enabled. Okay, and then there are two options for selecting. You could either do the pre-select participants or you could select participants in the actual live meeting. So let's start with pre-select participants. So pre-selecting participants, this could be really helpful to do so you have less work to do during the live meeting, but you would need to know who is attending the meeting prior to being able to assign them. So you would need to know their email addresses and those email addresses have to be connected to their actual Zoom account. So let me show you how you would do this. So you have to go into your settings again, and then you would go to where it says in meeting, you go to in meeting advance, then go to breakout room, and you'd have to check off this option where it says allow host assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. And again, I know these seem like there's so many settings involved, but once you do these once on your account, then you're set to go and you don't have to keep doing it. Okay, so now that we've enabled that setting, now we could actually review how to pre-select people for the breakout rooms. So you would click on an existing meeting or you create a new meeting. You would click that meeting, then you would go to you scroll down to where you see options, and then you would select breakout room pre-assign. So once you have done this, then we would click the button right under it where it says create rooms. Once we've do done that, this is where you will have the option to add the room names. So you can see here, I put clever room name. You could change it. You could add the participants email addresses here. And again, you just need to make sure that you have that participant's email address that um, um, is attached to their actual Zoom account. And once you have done this, once you've selected all the people you want, you'd click save and you have completed the pre-selection portion for this breakout room. Okay, now let's see if you wanna select participants in the live meeting. So this one, you don't need to know their email addresses. You do it just right then during your live meeting. So you would select breakout room from the bottom toolbar. And just a note, only the host or co-host can see this. So your participants cannot. And then you have two options here. So you could either do automatic. And this means that Zoom will automatically create the rooms for you. Or you could do manual, which means that you will assign each person to a room. So this is what that window looks like. So you have these two options. You could also select the number of rooms you want to create too. So just a few notes here about breakout rooms. So once you've created these rooms, either automatically or manually, the participants would need to accept their breakout rooms in order to enter them. If they don't accept it, then they'll just remain in the main room and then you would have to reassign them to another room for that option to come up again for them. Um, another note, the host cannot go into the breakout rooms, um, but the co-host can. So that's another great reason to have a co-host. That way your co-host can go into the breakout rooms, um, help them with any questions or participate as well. With, oops. So with both options, you could um, broadcast a message to everyone. You could, um, when you close the breakout rooms, Zoom will automatically set the default time for 60 seconds for them to come back into the main room. You can actually change this option too, and I'll show you what that looks like too in the next part. I'll do a demonstration next. So let me show you a demonstration of how to select participants for the breakout rooms during an actual live meeting. 
So I go to my toolbar here. I go to breakout rooms. Let me move this here. So I selected breakout rooms and this is what popped up for me. Um, I'm gonna do select manually and I'm going to choose, let's do, let's do three rooms. Click create, let me move this here so you can see this. Okay, so I have, I can rename my rooms here. Um, if, if you're so inclined, you could assign here, but I wanna show you this option here first. So this is what I meant about the countdown. So automatically it would be assigned to 60 seconds. I have changed it to 10 seconds before. So it's set here to 10 seconds. And you have these other options too, but this is the most important one I want to show you. So I'm gonna split us off into breakout rooms. And we will come back in just a moment, but I wanna show you all what it looks like. All right. So I think we've got everyone assigned. So I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms. You'll see something pop up that says, enter this breakout room, I believe it says. So make sure you see that and click it. So here we go. I think most of us have entered. Okay, everyone, welcome back. That was a short breakout room um, session there. Just wanted to get you all a feel for it. So I'm going to close this. Do we have um, a brave volunteer who wants to try breakout rooms? I'll assign you as co-host and you could set up breakout rooms. Anyone feeling um, up for it, up for the little challenge? I'll try it. Perfect. Okay. Andrea, I'm going to assign you as co host. Okay. okay you should be co host yes, now. I see it now. Okay. Perfect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Okay. If you could just keep me, oh. Alex, and Tom in the main room, that would be great. Do I recreate? Yes. Click recreate. Mm -hmm. And assign manually or automatically? You could you could do either one. Okay. Either one. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you have any questions too. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. And you could also try broadcasting a message too if you like. Oh, okay. Just type it in. Yeah, just click broadcast and then just type it in. This is where you could enter like questions or you could say, we'll go back to the main room in a minute, something like that. Yay. <laughs> and then whenever you're you know, done with your breakout rooms, you could click close all rooms and then everyone will have 10 seconds to come back. So it's easier to do it automatically. Um, yeah, if you, yeah, if you, maybe if it's like a smaller group, you could do manual. 
but it is a little easier just to do automatic and be done. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. You did great. Anyone else feel like trying it right now or does everyone feel comfortable with breakout rooms? I have a question. This is Claudia with MAOF. Hi, Claudia. Hi, uh, the question is, so the, um, we complete the breakout rooms. What about when the instructor goes into the breakout rooms? Is that a possibility? The host, like for- Right, instance, or the instructor or the host, right. The host won't go in. The host remains in the break in the main room. Right, they, they remain in the main room. But I've had uh, uh, sessions where there's been situations where the instructor somehow gets into the um, actual breakout room. Do you know about that? Um, let me see. I could, I think I could actually join it. Let me see. Automatically, they stay in the main room. But once I actually saw the option where it said join, mm -hmm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you were able to see it, but when I created the, uh, when I opened all the rooms, I had the option to join the room. Okay. So you could do it that way, or you could have a co-host could just, who is already assigned to a breakout room, but you could actually join them too. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so I'm just, I'm going to move on. Um, at the end, if anyone wants to try, try breakout rooms again, then uh, we could definitely do that. So let's move on to polls. So how to set up polls. So what are Zoom polls? Zoom polls, this is a paid feature. So you have to be a paid user or licensed user. So here you could create single or multiple choice questions and you could launch them during meetings. So only the host can create the new polls, but your co-hosts can launch them. So your host creates the new polls and then your host or co-host can actually launch them during the meeting. Um, and another note, so a host or co-host cannot participate in polls either. Um, so here you can create a maximum of 50 poll questions and each poll can have a maximum of 10 questions. So are there ways you have used polls already? Or what are some ways polls can be used for family engagement or staff engagement? Let's see if we could enter some ideas in the chat. So what are ways you have used it already? Or what are some ways you could use them for family engagement or staff engagement? I'll share. Oh, games at meetings. Thank you, Andrea. Perfect. I'll share an idea too. It could be um, a good icebreaker. Polls about the work we do. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, for sharing. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. Another idea could be um, feedback on a particular topic or feedback on classroom practices. So there are many ways we can use polls to our advantage. So let's get started. How to create poll questions. So polls can be created in advance or during a live meeting. So to, let's go over how to create poll questions in advance or before a live meeting. So you would either schedule a meeting or you would go to your meeting section. You click on the topic of your meeting. Then you scroll down to where you see the polls tab there, which looks like this. Then you would click create to begin creating your poll. So how to create your poll questions. So you would enter the title questions and answers here. This is what it would look like once you click create. Um, you could enter your question here. You could also, if you see where it says single choice, if you click that arrow, then you could choose either single choice or multiple choice. You would enter your questions here and you could enter up to 10 questions here too. Okay, and then, so how do we set up poll questions during a live meeting? So during a live meeting, um, if you wanna create your poll questions during a live meeting, I recommend you give yourself time before your participants join. That way you have time to um, perfect this. 
and you have it all ready to go and you're less nervous once the actual meeting starts. So you would click on the polls button on the bottom toolbar. You click that. And once you click that, it'll launch the screen here. You would click create. And then we would go back to that window that we saw on the previous slide where you enter your um, question, your answers and your title. And then you click save once complete. And once you've done that, then your poll is ready to go for your actual meeting. So now to launch a meeting here, you would click on polls on your toolbar. And then this will open the poll that you have created. You would click launch. Once you click launch, you'll see this window pop up during the actual poll. And once you've clicked end the poll, then you'll see this screen, which will just, I'll show you what that looks like too right now. In the next slide, I'm gonna do again a demonstration. So any questions on polls before I demonstrate how to do them? Okay, perfect. So let me show you, let me show you a demonstration on polls now. So I'm going to show you how to launch a in advance poll that was already created. So I created this poll beforehand. So this is what launches here and I already created these. So they're ready to go. If you click here, if you select, if you created more than one poll, then you would see two options here. Um, I wasn't very clever. I just named it poll one and poll two. Here's poll two, here's poll one. I'm gonna select poll two for the sake of time. If I click edit poll, then a window will pop up. It'll take me to my Zoom account. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to launch the account, um, the poll here. And you should all see something pop up, except Andrea, I don't think you will see it because um, I have US co-host still. Okay, and then you can see here it says the number of participants that uh, actually answer the questions. Um, you can see the actual results coming in here. Perfect. I'm going to, well, we'll wait for one more person. Okay, for the sake of time, I will end the poll. So you end the poll and you can see your results here. Um, you could share the results by sharing them. All your participants will see the results on their window. And I could click stop sharing. Um, you have options here. You could relaunch the poll. You could download the results or you could view the results from the browser. So that's pretty much all it takes to create a poll or launch a poll. Any questions on this? Is the poll timed? No, it's not. It's not timed. So you are in control of the timing here. Um, let me see. I could relaunch it, and it'll just keep going on until I end it. Any other questions? Or let's see. Do we have a brave volunteer who wants to try setting up or clicking the in advance poll, launching it, seeing how it looks like? I can try it. I can try it again. Okay, perfect. Let me make you co-host here again. Oh, I already have you as co-host. I think, okay. yeah. I think okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. So you should be able to click polls and get a feel for it. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Perfect, so I see it's launched, great. Okay, and then we could- Just end it? Yeah, 
Okay. And then you have the options here. You could share the results. And oh, this okay. works, yeah, it'll open it up for everyone to see. And then you could stop the sharing of the results, right? Yeah, you could stop the sharing. Oh, okay. Oh. That's, yeah, that's all it takes. Okay. It's yeah, sometimes I think it's for me personally, it's easier if I have the poll set up beforehand. Yeah. That way I don't have to worry about, you know, being nervous or time or anything. And it'll just pop up, pop up on your whatever screen it is that you're sharing. Okay. Yeah, it'll pop up on the yeah, on the Zoom window. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no problem. Thank you, Andrea, for participating. Okay, so just to wrap up, we went over how to assign, how to add a co-host, how to share your screen, um, how to share a screen, how to record a meeting, how to set up breakout rooms, and lastly, how to set up polls. So now we will share with you the infographic there is a color version or black and white. Um, so you have two options to download and we'll drop those into the chat in just a moment for you to download. So there's the color infographic. You can see the chat box there and then black and white to follow. So if you click those links, it'll open it up on our website and you could download them. Okay, and then some resources here. So Zoom has great articles on videos about the topics we discussed today. So please take a look at the Zoom Help Center and the Zoom blog. There's a Help Center in the chat right now and the Zoom blog. There's the blog. And then we'll also send you that PowerPoint right now in the chat box. So take a look. It'll be coming up shortly for you to download. I'll give that just a little bit. Of course, no problem. Thank you, Andrea. Let's wait for the PowerPoint first. There's the PowerPoint for you to download. Um, and then a few more resources here. So another document is uh, the Frequently Asked Questions document. We'll drop that in the chat. These are just um, additional questions that came up from our um, previous training. There were just some extra questions and I just created this document. So I thought it would be useful to share here as well. Um, and then there's, we wanna share the Zoom basics part one course. If you have not taken that, that just goes over some um, just basic features you could use with Zoom too, like adding the video filters or background. We'll share that in the chat, there it is. And then lastly, if you could please complete the type form evaluation. This one is really useful for us to obtain some more feedback about the training today. And it'll also help us create trainings that you like in the future. So please take a look at that and fill it out. And then that is it for our training today. If you have any questions or comments, or if you wanna try anything hands-on again, please feel free to stay around, I'll be here. If not, thank you all for Claudia, joining. I'm yes. sorry to interrupt, no, I have one question. Sure. What is, I noticed there's like a new little icon at the bottom of my screen that says apps. Apps, oh yeah, there's some apps you could um, integrate with Zoom here. I have not personally tried them, oh. but there are like games too. Like it says, if I click it right now, it says, um, let me move this here, but it says like, you could add Kahoot here, oh. you could add heads up games, but it'll integrate to your actual Zoom. So you could use it here too. Okay. All right. Maybe for a future training. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Exactly. I have to explore that a little more. Thank you. Um, Carly, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, so, but... So the other day I was hosting um, a Zoom meeting 
and for some reason I had a co-host I assigned a co-host and for some reason I couldn't record um I couldn't find anywhere on 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 my screen um to record the meeting I see it now on my end but in that particular situation um I couldn't so I'm just wondering if 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 um if that happens often or if maybe it was the way the meeting was preset do you maybe have an idea of what what could have happened there hmm. and you were you were the host i was the host and i had a co-host and neither one of us could find the recording option okay and you you're on your computer so there's yes. nothing okay yeah, just making <laughs> so sure. I, i'm just wondering if that you know if anyone's ever come across that problem and if so if, if you guys have any idea on how to how to address it yeah, I I haven't come across that problem myself. Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone here today who has encountered that. But um, so that day when you were the host, when you did you leave the meeting and then come back and were you able to see it again? No, I actually didn't try that. But um, maybe maybe next time. I, I hope it doesn't happen next time. I was just wondering if if that yeah. happened to anybody. Um, but I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. Um, you know, my first troubleshoot is always to like leave the program and come back. Okay. Yeah. It's, if something goes wrong with my computer too, I just like restart. That's my okay. first troubleshooting. Um, yeah, I haven't encountered like a good it. Restart. <laughs> as I always restart or leave the program and come back. Okay. Well, yeah. Sounds, yeah. sounds like you never know. It could be a glitch. Like I haven't, yeah. um, if you're actual host, or if you're assigned as a co-host, then I don't, yeah, I don't see um, any reasons or limitations to why that should happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. No, no problem. Thank you, Carla.